Hi, and welcome to everybody's favorite topic, how to solve word problems, but I promise they won't be that bad. So these are for exponentials. So here's a couple of steps, and I'm going to give you kind of a secret to step number one. So figure out the exponential equation, right? Always in word problems, the main thing is like, okay, well, I've got to find the equation from this thing, and then I can solve the equation. And that's like always the hardest step. So I'm going to give you a hint on how to do your equation for all exponentials, almost all. Um, then you solve it, then you apply your solution and problem, see if it makes sense, right? Because these are like real world things. So here is my hint to you. Every single exponential that you solve is going to be in this form, where A we'll call amount, P initial amount, initial population, principal, this will be called like eight different things. So we'll say initial, because I like that word the best. I like that explanation. E is the number E. R is the rate. This will also be known as growth constant. Um, and T usually is always T. T is time. And it could be a days, years, weeks, months, hours, whatever unit of time. But this is the general formula for every exponential. And we're going to use this one formula to solve the contrast, the sorry, continuous compound interest problem, the bacterial growth problem, and the computer science problem. So remember, A equals PERT, which is how I remember it too. So let's see PERT in action. Um, first off, let me move the little recording of me. So suppose a bank pays interest at a rate of 5%. Hey, I like it when they give us the numbers of stuff. Compounding continuously on an initial deposit of $1,000. Initial, so here's an initial amount. How long does it take? So how long means we don't know T. We're going to find T for an investment of $1,000 to grow to a total of, hey, here's the amount, of $1,200 with no withdrawals or additional deposits. So A equals PERT, P to the E to the R to the T. So A... So we know the total amount is going to be 1200 because they told us. We know the initial amount invested is 1000 because, again, they told us. We know E is E. We know the rate is 5%, which as a decimal is 0 0.05. And we do not know the T because that's what it's asking when it says how long. So we have this. Okay, let's solve this. Okay, well, how do we do that, you ask? Well, we use what we learned in the last videos for solving exponential. Last video, two videos ago, a past video, I'll say. We are going to start off by getting rid of the clutter, which is always the first step. So now we have e to the 0 0.05t on the right. We have 1200 divided by 1000. This is going to give us 1.2. And now what do we do? How do we get rid of the E? How do we get rid of the E? There's an E. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We do the LN of both sides. Um, LN E go So we have 0 0.05 T now on the right equals LN of 1.2, whatever that terrible decimal is going to be. Divide both sides by 0 0.05 because we're after T, 0 0.05. You're going to get real comfortable with ugly decimals if you do these enough. Okay, what is ln of 1.2 divided by 0 0.05? ln of 1.2 divided by 0 0.05. That is 3.64. Okay, now let's look at it again. What the heck are we even trying to figure out? Does this answer make sense? So how long does it take? What unit is this in? It doesn't say. Let's assume years because years would make sense. Um, so it's going to take 3.64 years. Uh, but if you want a whole number of years to be safe, we would say it's going to take four years to reach that, that target amount. Okay, let's see another compound interest problem. So again, we are going to use the P. Oops, sorry, not P. We are going to use the A equals P to the E to the R to the T. A equals per t. So an initial deposit is made in a bank account. Find the interest rate R. So that's what we're after. We're after the R for an initial deposit of $4,000. So initial deposit is 4000 
where after R, it grew to 8,000. So we know the, the final amount is 8,000 after six years, which means T is six. Boom. Got all of our pieces. Now let's figure out the R part. First thing we do, get rid of the clutter with all the stuff next to E. So divide out by 4,000, divide out by 4,000. 8,000 divided by 4,000 will get a 2 on the left. These guys will cancel out. We'll get E to the 6R on the right. However, will we undo the E? Oh, with our friend LN here. Almost sounds like I'm saying my friend Ellen. So we have LN of 2. These guys cancel out because they are inverses. Divide both sides by 6 to get our R. So our rate is going to be whatever the ln of 2 divided by 6 is, which is, what is ln of 2 divided by 6? 0.1155. So we usually want this as a percent, so we'll call this 0.12 is R. So the interest rate, though, because remember, we need to plug this back into what it is that we're trying to figure out. So find the interest rate. So if 0.12 equals R, the interest rate is going to be 12 percent which nowadays that is a great interest rate and if you can find this deal let me know because I want to invest as well okay next thing bacterial growth suppose the colony of bacteria doubles in 12 hours so hang on before I get started a equals P to the E to the R to the T suppose a colony of bacteria doubles in 12 hours from an initial population of 1 million so we know we have initial population of 1 million. We know it doubles every 12 hours. And because it doubles, what's the final going to be? If it doubles, it's going to go from 1 million to 2 million. And I am truncating my numbers. I'm basically dividing by a million, but not showing you my step that I'm doing that. Um, find the growth constant K. See, these guys use growth constant K. I'm going to keep steady with R because I like being consistent. Okay, let's solve for our growth constant first, and then we'll answer these two other questions. So 1 times e is simply e, so 12r. Let's get rid of that e by using our ln, ln, both sides, not the name ln. So ln of 2 equals, cancel, 12r divided by 12, divided by 12r is going to equal ln of 2 divided by 12, which is 0 0.06. All right, so we figured out our R. So the next question is, when will the population reach 4 million? Okay, so 4 million sounds like a total to me. Initial population is still 1 million times E to the growth constant, which is 0 0.06. And it's saying when will, when means what time, so I'm solving for t. So let's get going. So 4 is equal to 1 times e is just e to the 0 0.06 times t. Let's get rid of the e by using its inverse, which is ln. So we have ln of 4 equals, these guys cancel, 0 0.06 t. Divide both sides by point. 0 0.06, 0 0.06, and let's see what our t will equal. ln of 4 divided by 0 0.06 is 23.1. 23.1. So in 23.1, what are we, hours? 23.1 hours will go from 1 million to 4 million. Okay, how long will it take us to go to 8 million? Well, that's going to be 8 then equals initial population of 1 million times e to the growth rate, which we figured out is 0 0.06. How long? I don't know. So t is going to get the variable. So we have 8 equals 1 times e is e, 0 0.06t. We need to get rid of our e, so let's take the ln of both sides. When we do that, we have ln of 8 on the left. ln of e go away because they are inverses. And then we are going to divide both sides by 0 0.06 again, 0 0.06 again. And we are going to get that t is equal to whatever ln of 8 divided by 0 0.06 is, which is in fact 34.7. 34.7 hours. That's a 7. 7. 
and there we go. So if the growth, if what they call is the growth constant, isn't given, you can solve for it. You can solve for any of these pieces if you're given all the other pieces like you were here. And then you can answer whatever other questions they want you to answer. So let's go to our last example. Our last example is computer science. So in 1965, Gordon Moore, then director of Intel Research, conjectured that the number of transistors that fit on a computer chip doubles every few years, right? We can pack more of them and more of them in there. This came to be known as Moore's Law. Analysis of data from Intel Corporation yields the following model of the number of transistors per chips over time. S sub t equals 2297.1 times e to the 0.3316 t, where S sub t is the number of transistors per chip and t is the numbers of years since 1971. That will come in handy. A. What is the number of transistors per chip in 1971 according to this model? So if T is years since 1971, if we want to figure out what happened in 1971, then T would be 0. So S of T equals 2297.1 times E to the 0 0.3316 times 0, because 0 years. Anything times 0 is 0. E to the 0 is 1. So the amount of transistors in 1971 would be 2297.1. Why could we, oops, we need to sneak a 7. Why does this make sense? Because again, A equals P to the E to the R to the T, where P is the initial amount. The initial amount was, again, the transistors in the starting year. So that's why this came out so easily. It's all about P to, times E to the R T. It works every time. So B, how long does it take to double the amount of transistors? So double. So if this is our starting, then to double would be that times 2. So our amount that we're looking for is whatever 2297.1 times 2 is, which is 45. 594.2. Okay, so how long is it going to take to get to that number? 4594.2. That's the amount equals 2297.1 times e to the 0.3316 times t, which is what we're trying to figure out. So 2297.1 divided by 2297.1. This better come out to 2 because it's the double. So e 0.3316t. Let's do our bestest friend and ln both sides. So we'll have ln of 2 equal 0.3316t. Divide both sides by 0.3316. So we'll get t equal to ln of 2 over 0.3316. What is that equal? Let's see, ln of 2 divided by 0.3316. That gives us 2.1, I'm going to call it. I'm rounding. So in 2.1 years, it will double the transistors. So after two years, we will double. So we did A, and we just did B, and we're done. So thank you guys for playing along with me for that. I hope that helped. Remember our formula A equals P E R T, or A equals PERT. That will help you solve almost any exponential problem that you need to solve. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, and I'll see you guys in your next video.